when we thought about what DaVinci Resolve 16 would be, we took a step back and we looked at the edit page and we realized that all of the editing tools on there are really based on core concepts and workflows that haven't changed in decades. They're designed for long format feature film, episodic television kind of work, tons of tools and options that give you really precise control over everything. But there are different editors out there. In addition to those types of projects that I mentioned earlier, there are editors that need to work on fast turnaround short format projects. And we realized that it wasn't a one size fits all solution, that you actually needed to have a different interface dedicated for those types of projects, which is why we came up with the new cut page. So the first thing you'll notice about the cut page is the interface is streamlined. It's designed to give you only the tools you need to work quickly and get the job out. Uh, the most noticeable thing that's different is the uh, timeline area, which has actually two timelines. There's an upper timeline, which shows you the entire program that you're working on zoomed out. And then there's a lower timeline, which shows you the area in which you're working. Uh, it's kind of a close up zoomed in view of the area. And the great thing about this is all these timelines are active. So I can drag a clip on the upper timeline and move its position. I can go to the lower timeline and drag a clip from the lower timeline up to the upper timeline. I can trim in either place. I can work however I'd like to here. Then at the top left of the screen, you've got the media pool, which is fairly familiar for doing to resolve users. This area also has access to your effects and transitions and all the other stuff that you're accustomed to using. And then we have a single viewer on the right hand side and the single viewer will show me either my source or my timeline. You'll notice that uh, if I double click a clip to load it into the viewer, I can just scrub over the clip and I can see uh, the footage in my viewer. There's also a couple of different views. We of course have the standard text view, the list view, um, where you can customize the columns and see all kinds of metadata about your clips. And we have a new film strip view. And I really like the new film strip view because it lets me see uh, different frames throughout the clip at different points in time. So you can see in this particular clip that I'm scrubbing across now, there's an explosion and I can generally guess where in the clip the explosion is based on those little thumbnails. So it just is really helpful to let me find things a little more quickly than I could normally do. All right, so now let's go uh, select a clip and I'm gonna just sort my clips by time code. So a bunch of different options in the sort menu there. And I'm gonna find one of the clips that I wanna work on and You'll see that it loads in the viewer. In the scrub area, we have uh, our audio waveforms. We have an in and out point marked. I'm going to clear those really quickly so that we can uh, set new in and out points. So you can see I can drag wherever I want to. Let me turn the audio on. Now doing this is pretty much the same as it is on the regular edit page. You just move the playhead or use your JKL keys to position the playhead where you want it to be. And then you hit the I key to mark an in or the O key to mark an out. Um, and one of the things that we realized is that when you're dealing with clips, especially long ones, it can be really hard to fine tune and adjust those in and the out points. And actually, if I grab an in and out or an in point here and I just drag it a little, you'll see the audio waveform actually zooms in, which makes it really easy for me to uh, position in and out points based on audio waveform. But on the far left and right edges, you'll see some new buttons and these are scratch trim buttons. And these let you trim with a lot more precision because it doesn't matter if the clip is an hour long or five seconds. It always behaves the same way as you move the mouse. So it's consistent in that if I move the mouse a little, it's just going to move very, very ever so slightly. And you can see the number of frames that we're moving it right above uh, the in and out point selection area in the viewer. So scratch trimming just makes it a lot easier to be precise while you're marking your clips. All right. So that takes us to doing some edit types. We of course support all of the standard edit types, insert, overwrites, fit to fills and stuff that you're used to seeing. But we also have some brand new edit types just uh, on the cut page. And the first one is a smart insert edit. And it's smart because DaVinci Resolve doesn't need to have the playhead parked over an edit point to do this insert. What it'll do is it will just select the edit point nearest the playhead and it'll just insert the clip right there for you. So you're not gonna accidentally break up two clips or break up a single clip into two parts with the smart insert button. It'll always place the edit at an edit point, which is great. I share in the world. So they're calling you the new king of Las Vegas. How do you feel about that? All right, so there's our first edit. Now let's go and look at uh, another one of the new edit types. We have uh, an append to end button. So. Uh, I'm going to just look for a clip. I'm very honored. I'm a very, very lucky man. 
Okay, so we know that we want to use that line at the end of our project, so I'm just going to go and tap on the Append at End button, and it automatically adds that clip to the end of my timeline. So just some really uh, easy and fast edit tools. So there's a couple of others. There's a ripple overwrite tool, and what the ripple overwrite tool is, it replaces a clip in the timeline of one length with a clip of a different length. So in this case, you can see that we've got a clip of her talking as in the interview, and then we have this second clip that we're going to replace it with, which is much shorter. So if I go and use the ripple override button, watch what happens in the timeline. The shorter clip is automatically added and everything else is rippled down. It's essentially a four point edit uh, that we're just doing automatically for you. The next edit type you'll see on the toolbar is a close up and this will automatically do a close up of a clip. So let's go find um, a clip of our drummer and we're just going to add this as B roll on top of the interview and we'll double click to load that in the viewer so you can see what it looks like. We'll mark a little section very quickly. All right, so we're going to use the close-up button to put that on the timeline and it automatically puts it on video track 2 which I can target uh, by clicking on the number there to make it red. And now when I go and do the close-up edit you'll see that it's dropped on the timeline and it's zoomed in play this room every night. Pound for pound is the best show in the world. Okay, so that was a close-up edit. There's also a place on top, and then the last one which I'm going to show you is the source overwrite. Um, now the source overwrite tool is really cool, but I want to use it on a clip that's in a different location on my timeline, and this gives me an opportunity to tell you how much I love the dual timeline view, the upper and lower timeline, because I can just scrub through my entire project using the upper timeline. I can zip to any point in the project that I want without having to keep zooming in and out and in and out to do my editing. So I find the place with the clip that I want to work on. So I want to do a cutaway and I'm going to do it around the point where he looks down at the camera. Now we shot this with two cameras. They were synced via time code, so they were both recording the same time code. So now that I've got the playhead on the frame that I want, I can go to the other camera angle in my bin and I can hit the F key and it will match frame based on time code from the timeline to this new source clip. Now all I have to do is mark an in and out point. So I'll select the portion of the clip that I want to use. Get my out point. And now I'm going to use the source override button. And what it will do is it will drop that into the timeline at the exact time code position that it needs to be at. And it places it on top. So we still have our, uh, our A roll, so to speak, below it. And we've even got our B roll clip on track two there. And it's added a new track. So we can trim this up in the timeline. And uh, I can, as I mentioned earlier, I can trim in the lower timeline, I can trim in the upper timeline, wherever you want. All right. As elements of the 1950s and 60s. Great, that's starting to look really good. So uh, a couple other buttons here in the toolbar. We have some transition buttons in the toolbar that just make it easy to quickly um, add or remove transitions. All right, so let's move to another location where we can add some transitions. The cool thing about the transition buttons is, like the smart insert and smart edit buttons, you don't have to be exactly on a trim point. So I can just click my cross dissolve button and it'll automatically add a cross dissolve at the edit point nearest the playhead. I can go down to my timeline and I can make that longer and shorter just by dragging it. You can also see in the viewer at the top right, we have um, a, uh, a very precise trim editor where you can see how many number of frames you're moving things. You can also grab your transition in here. You can make it shorter. Um, the really cool thing is that I can go back to my transition bar and I can change it from a dissolve into a smooth cut with just a single click or I can remove the transition altogether by clicking on the cut button. So in this particular case, let's remove it and watch this for a second. So in this case, we've uh, removed a sentence that he was speaking so that's resulted in a jump cut watch his head I'm just great. okay so see that little hitch let's take another look at that one so we've sliced up his sentences my way. I'm just this great. is something that happens all the time in documentary and new style work pieces that you're doing so we want to just smooth that out we don't want to cover it with b-roll so what we're going to do is use the smooth cut transition and smooth cut uses optical flow uh, image analysis to actually morph or construct new frames at the edit point. So you only need to make it a few frames, so let's just shorten that a little bit. Okay, usually somewhere between two and six frames is enough for a smooth cut to work. And then we're just going to play it back and you'll see how it magically removes the jump cut. Quotes like that have thrown my way. I'm just grateful. 
that looks great. Of course, there's an entire library of transitions. You can click on the uh, effects library button at the top of the screen and you can see uh, all of the transitions. There are dozens and dozens of them. So let's just move our playhead uh, to another clip in the timeline and we'll add another transition. So let's grab something fun like, I don't know, maybe our star transition. And uh, we'll put that on now. See, I'm adding it on the upper timeline. I've dragged it to the upper timeline, but you're seeing it add in both places. So uh, really cool that the upper timeline is fully active and editable. Let's play our star transition. It's career and show in Las Vegas. That is awesome. Best star transition ever. Um, one of the great things about having the cut page uh, as part of DaVinci Resolve is that you get all of the power and tools in DaVinci Resolve. Um, and I can trim this right here. It's all going to be real time. So if I want to tighten up this edit a little bit, I can do that. And once we get it exactly where we want it, we can play it back. It's career and show in Las Vegas. Tell me a little bit and it's perfect. So again, it's all real time. So you don't have to wait for any rendering, uh, which is great. All right, so we're going to go uh, and spend a little more time talking about source tape. So we're going to change the media pool view to thumbnail view, and we want to import some more footage. So there are two buttons at the top left. The first one lets you import a single file, and the second one lets you import an entire folder. So if I use this folder button, the cool thing about it is it brings the folder in as a bin or bins if there are multiple folders. So we're just going to select what we want. We're going to hit open, and it adds the bin to my media pool there. So let's double click on that and see what we've got. So it looks like we've got about 10 clips of some Vegas B-roll here, and we want to review these clips and go through them. The fastest way to do that is to switch to source tape view, which will show me all of the clips in that bin, and then use the fast review button at the bottom left. So the fast review button is designed to play long clips at a high speed and to play short clips a little faster than they were recorded so you don't miss anything. So you can review a bunch of clips really quickly without missing anything. Now in this particular case, I know that there is a shot of a Matt Goss poster and instead of having to click each clip in my bin one at a time to find exactly which one I want to use, I can use source tape because I know it's in there somewhere, scrub through really fast, find it, hit the X key and it'll just mark that clip and I can edit it straight to my timeline. Super, super fast tools for reviewing uh, media and getting it into your program very quickly. In addition to all of our editing and trimming tools, the cut page also has an entire toolbar for things like resizing and retiming and cropping clips. So let's just take a look and see how some of those work. I'm going to park on this clip in my timeline and we're just going to do a reframing of the shot. So I'm going to use my transformation tool and I'm just going to click and drag and put it where I want. And all of this is real time here on the cut page. So if I go and play that back, you'll see that it plays back in real time. Now in this shot, we're on the Las Vegas Strip here and we've got the exploding water fountains. We just want to retime it. We're going to make that slower. So I'm going to select the clip and we're going to go uh, past our transform and audio tools to the center tool, which is the retime. I'm going to grab the amount and I'm just going to make it half speed. So I'm going to set it to 0.5 and maybe we'll ease in and out of that retime. So let's go take a look and see what that looks like. Great, so we've retimed the clip. If I don't like the frames that I'm seeing in the timeline, you actually have a slip tool right here that you can grab in the middle of the clip. And that brings up the 4-up viewer, which shows me the first and the last frame of the clip I'm editing, along with the two adjacent frames for the clip on the left and the clip on the right of this one. So you can quickly do uh, some slipping right in the timeline if you need to tidy things up like I just did. Let's show you a clip to stabilize. So let me go find a clip that we can stabilize. So it's just a little wobbly. So let's go and use our stabilization tool. So you can see I click on the little camera icon and I have uh, either stabilization or lens correction. So let's do the stabilization. And we will just analyze it. It'll take a second and play it back. And that looks great. All right, there's a couple more things that I want to show you and I'm going to just use my upper timeline to go to the end of the program. Uh, again, so fast and easy to navigate around without having to zoom in and out. Uh, we have dynamic zoom here on our toolbar. So this is a, a locked shot, but I want to just give it a little motion to add some interest. So I'm going to click on my dynamic zoom button and the green box is the starting position and the red box is going to be the ending position. So we're just going to have it push in a little bit on the two of them. 
So now my dynamic zoom is set. I'm going to play that back and you'll be able to see how that looks. So it's just a subtle drift in. Now on this last clip, we're going to use some filters and effects. So uh, let me just turn looping on because we want to loop around this clip. So this is the clip we're going to work with. And I'm going to go to my effects library at the top of the screen, the top left in the media pool. You can see that I've got dozens and dozens of resolve effects here that we can use and we can apply. So uh, for example, if I wanted to go and use one of our tilt shift blurs, which is one of our filters, I now get an effects icon in the toolbar at the end. I can click on it to open the inspector for this filter and we can do a tilt shift blur and I can even use the on-screen controls to adjust the location of that tilt shift and the blur. I can adjust the depth of field, all kinds of different parameters, and then just play that back. You can see again it's all real time. I'm going to open that inspector and I'm just going to delete that one and let's try another one that's kind of fun. We're going to use the stylize plugin. So I'm going to just drop that on. And the stylized plugin gives us a bunch of different options that we can play around with here. So as this is looping through, you'll see that I've got all kinds of different options. It's real time. These are uh, resolve effects that are included with DaVinci Resolve Studio. And you can do some really cool things. So once you're finished with your edit and you're finished um, with your program and you want to get it out, we have a new quick export feature to help you do that very, very quickly, as the name implies. So it's at the top right of the screen. There's a little icon for it, quick export. I'm just going to click on that. It pops up a little window, and the little window gives me options for some common export presets. Now you can always customize these and add to them on your own, but we give you H.264, ProRes, YouTube, Vimeo, and H.265. Now YouTube and Vimeo are really cool because we've added the ability to upload directly from DaVinci Resolve to your YouTube or Vimeo account. So the way you do that is you click Manage Account and you need to just sign in here to your YouTube and Vimeo or Frame.io accounts and then just save that in Preferences and then it'll automatically export, render, and upload that to your YouTube or Vimeo account for you. So that's a quick look at the cut page. I'm going to switch over in just a second to the edit page and we're going to look at some of the other new features in DaVinci Resolve 16. Okay, so I've switched projects because I'm going to show you some of the other features that we've added to DaVinci Resolve 16 on the edit color and Fairlight pages. So let's jump right in. I'm on the edit page. Um, I think one of the biggest and probably most exciting features for a lot of our existing users is the ability to now create new timelines within the same project that actually have custom settings. So I can have different formats, frame rates, and resolutions all in the same project now. This one's been a long time coming and I'm really excited that it's in there. You also can set separate monitoring and output options for every single timeline in your project. So that's really great. There's also a lot of other small features that I'm not going to have time to go over, uh, so check out our website to uh, find the full list. But here's what I want to show you. We now support rectified and non-rectified waveforms in the timeline, so you can see the full wave if you want to work that way. All right, in this particular uh, sequence of shots, we've got uh, the family sitting at the dinner table, and I want to add a vignette to these clips. Now previously you had to do this on the color page, but now in DaVinci Resolve 16 we've given you some new tools. So I'm going to go to the effects library and if I scroll all the way down uh, in the effects library you'll see at the bottom there is an effects category and we have a new adjustment clip object. So I just drag the adjustment clip to my timeline I make it as long as I want it to be and then I can apply effects to this clip and whatever I do to this adjustment clip will affect everything below it. So let me go to my Resolve Effects category here, all of my filter effects. Um, and these, you'll see, are available on the edit page, some of them for the very first time because they weren't all available on the edit page. So let me find my vignette filter, which is one of our new ones. I'm going to add that in. You can see that it's put a vignette over all of those clips now in my timeline. I can go to the inspector, of course, and I can edit the vignette. I can keyframe and animate that. And uh, one of the really cool things in Resolve 16 is that I now can see parameters for third-party OpenFX plugins as well as our own Resolve Effects plugins right here in the Timeline Curve Editor. So if I wanted to animate that and change it over time, I could like so. So that's a quick look at adjustment clips. 
Adjustments can have anything uh, from resolve effects like this vignette to full-on color corrections and they affect everything below them. So adjustment clips are pretty awesome. We're really excited about that. Um, let's look at the DaVinci Neural Engine and the facial recognition stuff. So I'm going to switch my media pool. I've got a bin full of clips here and I'm just going to select them all and I'm going to say analyze clips for people and now it's going to look through those clips and it's going to use the new DaVinci Neural Engine to find the faces in those clips. So the Neural Engine uses deep neural network machine learning and AI um, to let us take mundane and repetitive tasks and automate them and it allows us to add some super cool new features so this is just the start for the DaVinci Neural Engine it's only going to get better and we're really excited about what it's going to enable us to do in the future. Alright so now you see that it's found the faces of some of our characters here and I just double click and I can type a name so we'll pretend that's me and we'll say this one is Michael and this one is Jim Right, and then I've got this other people category, so if I just double click on that, it shows me a clip and it's recognized a face in there. Well, it knows that there's a face in there, it hasn't recognized who it is. So I can say, you know what, that's one of me too. It's really not, but we'll just say it for now. I'm going to close that. And what you can see here in my bins on the left hand side under the smart bins, it's automatically created bins for people. So all of the shots with Paul, all of the shots with Michael, all of the shots with Jim, let me make this a little bigger, show up here in the bin. So this is a really fast way for you to quickly organize clips. All you have to do is let it analyze the faces, give them names, and then as shots come in with those people in them, they're automatically added to the smart bins. Smart bins have also been updated. So for example, if I go and I select a bunch of shots here in my bin, and I go to my metadata panel, I can add keywords. And let me just uh, show all groups. I'm going to add a keyword. I'm just going to say, I don't know, baseball. So now when I go look in the keyword smart bin, you'll see every, every clip that I've tagged with the keyword baseball now shows up in that bin. So automatic smart bins for keywords, automatic smart bins for people, and also automatic smart bins for metadata that comes in from like your sound recorder or any other device that you may have used on set, whether it's a camera or a field recorder, to capture metadata. All right, let's look at our new speed change. So we have uh, some new speed technology, retiming technology. Strike three, you're up. So I'm just going to mute this. And let's just make some more room so that it can be a little bigger. We're going to do a single viewer. So here is a look at a clip that's been retimed. It's 25% of its original speed. And this is using the standard uh, retiming. So let's just take a look at that in the inspector. If I go to the inspector, you can see the retiming scale category. It's using the nearest um, process. We're going to use optical flow and we're going to change it to make sure that it's set to speed warp. Okay, I'm going to go full screen and I'm going to play back the original and the new speed warp version side by side so you can see the difference. So here it is with the optical flow and speed warp. So you can see it's much, much smoother looking. All right. Let's also talk a little bit about performance. So I'm going to turn off my render caches and I'm going to turn off my fusion cache because I want to show you how we've made titles a lot faster. So if I go to my titles category and I go to add a title here, I'm just going to shorten that up. We're just going to type in something like baseball since this movie is about baseball and I'm just gonna play and you can see straight away it plays back much faster it's nearly real-time in DaVinci Resolve 16 whereas in the previous version you had to render all of this so tons of speed and performance improvements for fusion things happening on the edit timeline here in DaVinci Resolve 16 alright let's go to the color page and check out some of the new features there there's a lot of stuff on the color page as well so uh, I'm just gonna go down and show you our curves. In curves you'll see that we now have histograms that can be set to the input or the output histogram uh, right underneath the curves. So this is a really awesome way to be able to see how your curve adjustments are going to affect the histogram in the image. You also may notice that on the bottom we've got some new scopes and I'm going to just switch to a different clip here and 
show you the new scopes. So these are our GPU accelerated scopes. And let me just pop these out and make them a little bigger and show you some of the different options. So this is the parade. We've of course got the waveform, vector scope, the histograms, and we even have a new CIE 1931XY that you can use. In their GPU accelerator, you'll find tons of new options in here. So let me just go back to the parade and uh, show you we've got YRGB, YCBCR options as well. Um, you can adjust the parade, the Graticule, show reference levels, and in the options menu, there's a low pass filter you can enable to help clear things up. You can adjust the aspect ratio and also quality um, of the images on the scopes based on the GPU you have in your system. Really huge upgrade for scopes in DaVinci Resolve 16. Some other great new tools, uh, you'll see that this clip is color corrected. And if I wanted to copy, I can go to my edit menu now and I can copy. And then I can go to another clip and I can now paste attributes on the color page. And this lets me paste the attributes from a specific clip, in this case from clip 21 node 1 to clip 22 node 2. I can copy keyframes, uh, some or all of the parameters like color corrections, windows, uh, circular windows, linear windows, qualifier, motion effects. So now you can be very specific when you're copying and pasting uh, between nodes on a color page. So that's a really huge new feature. Uh, it's really great. So let's go look at a couple of these clips here. So I've got a few clips in a row. Um, the first one has been color graded. So in addition to copying and pasting attributes, we also have uh, improved our auto shot matching. So I can say match those three clips to the one that I've now got clicked on, that I now clicked on here. And it's going to use the neural engine to actually analyze the first clip and apply a similar grade to the second, third, and fourth clips. So shot matching is greatly improved in DaVinci Resolve 16 as well using the neural engine. Okay, next I'm going to show you our incredible new object removal plugin. Uh, to do that, I'm going to close up my gallery just so that we have a little more room to see the video here. And the first step in the object removal is to actually create a mask. And I'm going to go and show you the mask here. This has just been drawn with the built-in drawing tools, and then it was tracked automatically using the built-in tracker. So nothing really special here. It just takes a couple minutes to draw that mask and uh, to run the tracker. And then you add another node with the object removal plugin, which you can see here on the right-hand side of the screen. So that's the object we tracked, so we're going to just play that back. And that's the area that the object removal plugin is going to be looking at. So all I have to do is a scene analysis, and it will process that. It's really pretty fast. And I'm going to turn off our mask overlay, and he's disappeared. So that's object removal in DaVinci Resolve 16. It's pretty awesome. All right, let's look at the Fairlight page. And oh my gosh, the Fairlight page has gotten a huge upgrade with DaVinci Resolve 16. There is so much in here and so much to talk about with this release. Uh, we're only going to be able to touch on a few things in a little bit of time we have left. But automation is more powerful than ever with new preview mode. There are new bus tracks, new loudness meters. Uh, there's new Fairlight effects, uh, dialogue processing plugins. There is the new elastic wave alignment stuff. So let's just take a quick look at some of these. So automation uh, has been greatly improved. There's a whole new set of controls so that you can now punch in, punch out, copy, paste, and erase existing automation. So you can see here in the drop down menu, you can uh, select your automation options. And there's a new preview mode so you can actually record automations without committing or writing the data. So this lets you basically audition different automations that you perform without having to save that. And once you get it the way you like it, you can just save the automations and it writes the data when you're ready. We've also got new bus tracks that let you view and edit bus automation right in the timeline. So you can go to the track index, you can turn on whatever buses that you'd like to see in the timeline, and then it is displayed as a linear representation like any other track in the timeline. You can record using the standard automation tools. There are also new loudness tools in DaVinci Resolve 16, and this helps you make sure that your project meets current delivery standards. So you'll see there are new presets for America, Europe, New Zealand, Australia, Japan, and Italy. 
Uh, one of my favorite things is that you can actually view your loudness history over time in the timeline. So I just turn those curves on and if something goes wrong in the meters, you see it peaking, you can turn the graph on in the timeline and see exactly where it happened. All right, another cool thing is that you can normalize clips in the timeline to loudness standard, sample, or true peak target levels. You can do this on both the Fairlight and Edit pages. And if you're not sure what normalization means, think of it as like auto white balance for sound. It's just a really great way to make things sound great pretty quickly. Good editor cheat. Okay, a couple of things that I want to just mention before we move on to elastic wave alignment, which I'll show you in a second, is uh, we've improved the important decoding of embedded AAF files that include audio and track automation information. So it just makes working with other audio applications uh, a little smoother. We've also now added support for mixing and mastering in immersive 3D audio formats. So if you're doing high-end 3D audio work, uh, Fairlight is the place to do it. One of the coolest new features on the Fairlight page for me is the elastic wave alignment. It lets you stretch audio waveforms so when you're re-recording dialogue, you can get a perfect lip sync. So all I have to do is select elastic wave and then I command click to add these markers in the wave and then you just start dragging them around until the clip matches the waveform above it on the timeline. So that I can make sure that the start and ends of words happens precisely where they're supposed to happen. What? He didn't call for it! So that's elastic wave alignment. Now before we uh, finish up here, I just want to show you some of the new effects. In the effects library you'll see we've taken Fairlight effects from a handful of effects to I think it's over 20 now, and we've added some really great ones. There's a new dialogue processor. There's the Fairlight FX Foley sampler. So uh, also, if you uh, download DaVinci Resolve, you can also download a free library of about 500 different Foley samples that you can use with Resolve. So you can drive the Foley sampler with a MIDI keyboard, and you can you know, really audition and, and listen to sounds and then play them back in real time with your video and record those. So really cool use of Foley libraries here in DaVinci Resolve. So that's a quick look at DaVinci Resolve 16. There is so much stuff in here. It's a huge release. The cut page uh, is completely new, and then we have dozens and dozens of features uh, for editors and colorists and, and audio editors. So please check out uh, our website, blackmagicdesign.com. Download the public beta if you want to give it a try. We expect to be shipping sometime this summer, and uh, by all means, send us your feedback.